Hello everybody, it is Ashley Fields with Yard R Us. Today we are going to be painting some candy canes, both small and our medium size, as well as we're going to be painting some peppermints. So it is nice and toasty here. I hope everybody's doing well. Uh, let me see. I have been trying to get started. Hey Debbie, I'm so glad you're here. I've been trying to get started on um, getting blanks ready for August as well as painting blanks for Christmas. So I've been kind of all over the place. I hope everybody else is doing good. Uh, whew, it is hot in here. It's, uh, it's uh, 98 degrees. <laughs> so if y'all see me sweating profusely, it's this Christmas in July, y'all. It's nice and toasty. All right, so I started with everything already base coated. So I base coated everything in two coats of white, and then, or I'm sorry, I primed everything in two coats of white, and then uh, base coated with my regular uh, Christmas green and a red number 20. So all the pieces we're doing tonight all have the same colors. Hey Lauren, how are you? Thank you Debbie for sharing. Uh, the only ones I have that I have like a finished version of is our peppermint so I did finish these today so you guys could get, kind of have a look everything else we're gonna have to finish our stuff together so I'm gonna just hop on in and get started uh, let's see these two peppermints I just got those base coated just a little bit ago so I know I don't need to um, Windex them but the candy canes I'm gonna go ahead and get to Windexing so we can get started uh, the good thing about these three pieces we're doing tonight is I can paint them all at the same time because they all have the same colors. Hey Joyce, I hope you're doing well. Miss Joyce, I saw your text before I went live. Uh, I'll, I'll get your order tomorrow and I'll bring it on home with me. Anybody who's in Conroe area, if y'all would rather pick up in Conroe, that's where I live. So that's always an option. Miss Joyce lives out here with me. Hey Deborah, how are you, hon? I'm so glad you're here. I was thinking about your chicken that you did the, uh, I was thinking about that like yesterday, the, how you redid it with the red. I just love how that thing came out. I'd love to get some pictures of that uh, for advertising because you did such a great job on that. All right, Karen's asking, why do we Windex them? Karen, everything that blows around in the air, dust, pollen, allergens, any of that stuff, it's gonna sit on the surface of your pieces and then when you go to paint them, typically your paint will start separating. And so in order to prevent the separating, we use Windex to clean everything down and give you a nice uh, clean surface so your paint will adhere to your surface. So, all right y'all, uh, I'm gonna be kind of grabbing and shading and then moving. We're gonna shade all the red at once. So we have uh, six pieces we're doing tonight. So I'm gonna shade all six red at the same time. So, hey mom. How are you? I thought I put it on Christmas music, but I see it's shuffling my Pandora station, so I'm kind of worried about what might come on next. So if my um, uh, 2005 R&B hits comes on, I might have to go change my, uh, or turn off my, uh, my music. So I guess y'all get a little bit of uh, country in the background for now. <laughs> but if you see me get up and go running, because the music might become inappropriate. So, I, I was messing with it and I kept saying it was on uh, the Christmas station and then it was giving me a lineup of Christmas but then it played Jason Aldi and I was like, what are you doing? All right, so that's just my first one. All I did was follow it along with my etch lines with my shader number 12. I'm gonna just move it and do the same exact thing with all of these pieces. So this is that nice part about when you're painting multiple pieces and they all use the same colors. A lot of your Christmas pieces are gonna be red, white, green, or at least have those colors inside of them. And so it's, it's nice because you can really knock out a lot of pieces at once. I'm scared about the song selection, y'all. I'm really scared, might be some tea pain or something. Oh look, there's some Christmas, yay. Okay. I'm gonna just go ahead and get on my um, my peppermint. Y'all, I'm dripping sweat. I feel it dripping down my legs. Whew. 
It is nice and toasty. All right, so same thing. I'm gonna stick with the lines. Now, on this piece, I'm gonna kinda take this line and go all the way across to the opposite side. And I'm also using my brush in this straight direction as opposed to uh, turned on its side. I'm trying to achieve a little bit of a thinner line because these are very small lines that it's giving me right here. I don't have a whole lot of space. I'm always rotating my pieces too, just that way it's, it's a little bit easier on you. So you'll see me doing that a lot. Because my hand likes to flow in a certain direction and it's not too fond of going the opposite of what it is, what it is that I want to do. So that's kind of your start on your um, peppermints. Now obviously this peppermint's green, so we're gonna skip him. He doesn't have any red. Now on these little candy canes, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna keep my shader kind of lengthwise as opposed to using the corner of it and fanning that out. So what I mean by that is when I'm gonna come down on here, my brush is parallel to that line, just like that, as opposed to doing the side view, which will give you a much thicker line. I want this to be a little bit thinner. I don't have a whole lot of surface area here, so I have to consider that when I'm um, shading. I don't know if you guys saw my post earlier about um, Hobby Lobby, but I found some metallic gold and um, silver that's for exterior and interior use. I was so excited about that. Hi, Kathy. Hey, Danae. Uh, Debbie says, what shading color is that? Debbie, this is uh, shading red number 23. Thank you for asking. I don't believe I had told you guys that. So shading red 23. And I'm literally just repeating the same thing on each piece. Same exact thing. Coming in, following along with that line. Allowing my brush to just kind of get in that groove. And then taking my brush across. You see I'm not having to put too much paint on here or reload. I'm able to use the amount of paint I have in my brush for at least half of the piece, so that's not too bad. All right guys, so step one, our shading red number 23. And now let me move some of these over. I brought a 10 foot table in and it still doesn't seem like it's big enough. Or not a 10 foot, this is eight foot. Hey Donna, hey Kimberly, I'm glad y'all are here. I hope y'all are in, sitting inside and enjoying some AC. It has been a toasty last couple of days. I guess that uh, the real summer is here. So, all right guys, uh, now we're gonna switch on over to uh, dark green. Ooh, I don't wanna quote, I think it's 12. There we go, it's number 12. Dark green number 12. Mine does already have a little bit of water in it. I'm still using the same shader number 12. I just washed it out in my water a little bit and I'm gonna just reuse it right now. So here we go, same thing. Loading up the brush, starting at one corner and then taking it all the way to the opposite corner. That's gonna give you that nice smooth line where you're not creating a bunch of different transitions between your brush strokes. Oh my gosh, y'all, by the way, went to Hobby Lobby today and they already have Christmas out and fall and they have Easter um, clearance <laughs> and they, they have July 4th too. I was telling Zach, they literally have every holiday out right now. So if anybody's in the Christmas mood, you can go shopping at Hobby Lobby and start buying your decorations. I, uh, y'all know I love Christmas, but I felt like July was a little early. Oh Lord. It is hot. Okay. I only The only other ones I have to get a little shading on are my canes with my bows. So Deborah says she loves watching our family videos. It inspires you to buy the nutcrackers and painted them yesterday. That is so awesome. Send us a picture or, yeah, some photos when you get done with those, Miss Deborah. Honestly, half the battle with painting is getting over your own uh, stressors that you create for yourself, like trying to be perfect 
or you know fighting with a paintbrush or thinking that yours needs to look exactly like mine or Mary's or somebody else in the painters club you can't really compare yourself to other people I, I've done that forever with my mom's stuff and finally I just realized I'm my own artist she's her own artist and we have a lot of similarities but that we have a lot of differences too so I encourage you guys you keep up at it but it's it's kind of hard to compare yourselves to us when we've been doing it a long time you know but y'all have really amazed us. Y'all have done such a great job. We can tell a lot of you guys too are really growing and how good that you've gotten uh, at painting. It's just amazing. We love seeing it. Now this bow is a little small, so I'm honestly probably using a little bit too wide of brush strokes. I might need to use a smaller shader it might be a little bit more beneficial. Sorry, I didn't see y'all are missing out on part of it, but this is that shader I'm always using. So I just kind of followed along with that outer edge and then came in with a couple of swish marks. I need to go to my uh, optometrist. These glasses keeps like sliding and falling down. I think they need to get readjusted. Hey, Jennifer, I'm so glad you're here, Marcy. I hope you're doing good. Hope the kiddos are doing good. We're gonna come see you in the morning, Miss Marcy. I only got a little bit of paint, but I noticed we've been out of uh, some poly and we're getting low on some of the other Christmas colors. So I did refill some jars today. I'll take to the store in the morning. I feel like I'm watching um, Home Alone. I think this is the song when they were chasing them through like Central Park or something. Maybe before that. Ah! I'm dragging paint here. Creating boo-boos. Alrighty. So now, you guys, all, all of the pieces that we're doing tonight are already shaded. They're done as far as shading goes. They all just need to be outlined. But since that went so fast, I might need to uh, blow dry these right quick yeah I definitely have to blow dry uh, so that we can um, outline them let's see Debbie said she uh, well I glitter these Kimberly I'll actually glitter these at the end I do have two um, two peppermints that are dry that I'm gonna glitter at the end um, let's see uh, Debbie said she met Jana on Sunday she's a sweet girl yes Jana is I hope I, I think it's Jana or Jana I'm not I'm not 100% sure Jana Jana sorry if I'm saying your name incorrectly which I know one of those ways is incorrectly uh, but she had worked with my mom on painting and like last fall and so we've been bringing her we brought her back and have been training her at helping to work the store to cover some hours because uh, Lord knows we're all tired so let me grab my blow dryer I actually already have it out here Y'all be patient with me. I gotta try to get this stuff as dry as possible. So I, on these, Kimberly, I'm gonna dry with, uh, I'm gonna glitter them with poly, or I'm gonna use poly and then sprinkle the glitter on the poly, and then I'll do another poly. So it's, it's just a clear silver mixture that we do, lightly over top of it. Sorry guys, I know uh, blow drying is not the funnest, but if you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to ask them. I'm happy to answer any questions. I know that we have an academy tomorrow. We have a Zoom meeting at 7 p.m. for those of you who are in the academy with us. Um, Wednesday, my mom is doing a tutorial over gingerbread and then and painter's club. And then um, Thursday, I'm in here doing a tutorial over the plain bulbs with the stripe. I was actually working on those today. I've got one that I did plaid with painter's tape, and then I've got one I did stripes, and I got one I'm doing polka dots all by freehand, I, I, you know. Um, I went to Hobby Lobby today looking for a chevron stencil because I wanted to do chevron, but their chevron stencils are like this far apart, and that's a little bit too much for me. A little too much work on that. So I'm not sure I'll have chevron on Thursday, but we will definitely have some other options or different ways that you can paint the plain bowls. 
Uh, Kim says, can you do them using the red and green and white glitter? Yeah, of course you can. Um, yeah, it's a little more work for sure, but you, there's no reason you can't do them like that. Me personally, I love the painted look better than I love the glittered look. And that's just a personal thing. So I like doing them painted with the clear mixture over top so that you can see the painting. I think I only got like one more. They don't have to be dry dry, but they gotta be at least dry enough I can get black paint to stick. So Brenda's asking, will we be making other Christmas lights? Brenda, we will not for this month. Next month, we're going into fall, Halloween, and Thanksgiving. All, all of that's gonna be in August. Now, after that, from September, October, and November, we will release a couple of blanks a month, maybe like three a month. Um, but all of the tutorials for those that we release September, October, and November, they're all gonna be done in the Academy for a number of reasons. Uh, one of them being that that's our really busy time of year and we won't have the time to be doing, you know, like 20 videos a month like we're doing this month and next month. The reason we're doing that now is so that you guys have that the rest of the year. So when you get to these projects, you know, you already have a video for them. So uh, that's one reason. And then the second reason is those who sign up to be in, the, um, be in our membership group, you know, they, they just have some perks. And one of those perks is that they get lives that nobody else gets, as well as they get 20% off blanks. So if y'all are interested in joining the Academy, we'll open those doors back up at the end of August. And September 1st is when the new group uh, will be allowed in and have access to uh, old material as well. So hope that helps. I know that was kind of a long-winded answer. All right, guys, uh, next all I gotta do is we're gonna just go to outlining. These are rather quick. Uh, I didn't base coat them for you because I had six items and that just can be a little bit time consuming. So, uh, you know, I did already have them kind of prepped and ready to go. But even then the base coating of these doesn't take too long. So at this point I'm just using my black and I'm just following along those etched lines that are already given to me. Kind of forget that you guys can't always see uh, with the angle that you have. Um, you know what, Miss? I think it was Brenda was asking. Brenda, you did ask about the blanks. I did want to let you know, even though we won't have the tutorials on the blanks. September, October, and November in the Painters Club, we will, uh, you all do still have access to, to purchasing those blanks. I thought I should mention that because I did not mention that. So everybody can purchase the blanks, but the tutorials will only be in the Painters Club. Uh, and then Kristen's asking if we'll continue to cut and sell Christmas blanks over the next few months. Yes, we will to the best of our ability. I cannot promise that we uh, will have them in stock you know, up until Christmas, we're gonna do the best that we can. But when time, when our busy season arrives, we don't really know um, how that's going to look like with blanks also, because we've never done both. So we just would rather prepare everybody and let everybody know we're gonna do our best, but we can't make any promises. And that way, if we do get really busy and we stop cutting blanks, you know, in October, then that's just what it is. It's not something I can answer yet until our season gets here. So, uh, Kimberly, the discount in the uh, Painters Club is, uh, I believe, 20% off blanks. Or is it 15? I thought it was 20. I don't know. Maybe my mom can um, verify that for it. The Academy, we had, uh, the first time around, we priced it at $22 a month. So I don't know if there is gonna be a price increase, but if there is, it, it wouldn't be, you know, like a drastic increase. We wanna make it affordable. But the Academy also has, we have a website, yardartacademy.com, where we have a ton of instructional videos for you guys. 
Things like shading video, videos over just shading, videos over just outlining, videos of us going to um, Home Depot, going to Ace, stores like that and shopping and showing you guys what we get. So, the, oh, it's 15% on blanks. Uh, but the membership or the Yard Art Academy has just so much more to offer than our regular painters club. It's more in depth. So there's your first look at one that's uh, outlined. All I got to do on him is just get a little bit of white. So let me set him aside and just continue on finishing up all of these with uh, my black. These are nice and easy. I hope that you guys watching y'all feel like these are something that are achievable for you. Oh, hey, Miss Joy. I hope you're doing good. Uh, Adriana's asking if we're going to make any girl gnomes. I've seen a couple of you guys asking that question here in the last, I don't know, couple of weeks. My question to you guys is for a certain holiday or just a gnome in general to put out at your house, like for all year long. I'm not really sure because I do look around online, honestly, weekly for new templates. And um, there's not a whole lot that are cute in the way of the girl gnome templates. Uh, but I'm happy to hear what, you know, if you're looking for something more specific as far as the girl gnomes. You guys, I'm using my script liner number four, the same script liner that we have at the store. Uh, mine's just old and worn out because that's the way I like my brushes, so. my Christmas tree y'all this Christmas music's just really getting to me I'm loving it so there's piece number two now these two little candy canes they're super super fast and easy very easy so the same lines we just did with our shader we're just gonna do them um, uh, follow along that line with a little bit of black very apparent to me that I uh, windexed some other items but did not windex this one. So whoever it was that asked why do we windex, I want you to see why. Do you see how that paint is separated? I don't have smooth lines on there. That, friends, is why we windex. I must have skipped that one, y'all. I'm not sure. Let me try to Windex this one though, and I can show you the difference between a Windex one and a not Windex one. Now this one, the only thing I can do is wait on it to dry and I'll come right back after it dries, I'll Windex it and come right back over it uh, with uh, black and it'll be just fine. Give me just one second, I'm gonna finish this one and I'm gonna do a side by side and let you guys see it because I want y'all to also know that I make mistakes. I make rookie mistakes all the time. She's kind of part of it. Okay. Y'all can see the difference between Windexed piece and not Windexed piece. So if you're having that kind of an issue with your lines, do a little bit of Windex. Now I'm going to move these aside because as far as my black goes, I don't, I am done with them. Only thing I got to do to those is a little bit of white. Now, on my peppermints, I am just going to now outline the lines exactly where we shaded them. I'm just going to outline them with black. So, let's see. Adriana says, an all year round girl gnome. I got it. I'll add it to our list of ideas that we have and we'll see what we can come up with. It wouldn't be this year, it would end up being next year because we're doing all holidays the rest of the year. Oh, uh, Miss Joyce, you love my Christmas music. I'm glad y'all could see the difference. 
I don't know if you guys noticed, but the same exact stroke that I did with my shader is the same thing I'm doing with my script liner. I'm starting at the same spot and going to the opposite side. I love Carrie Underwood's voice. I think this is her and Vince Gill. It's really beautiful duet. we got left is our green and then a bunch of uh, highlights. These are some really fast, easy projects. Um, these three patterns. So if you're new to painting and you want to start with something not intimidating, uh, I encourage you to start with something like these, those small little candy canes. Those are easy, easy. Hey, Misty, how are you, hon? All right, guys, we just finished outlining all of our pieces. All we gotta do is add a little bit of white highlights to them, because as we all know, no piece is finished until you have your highlights. Uh, Adriana has asked if we'll be doing any more Miss Piggies. No, uh, we've moved on from that. I'm, I'm only doing holiday stuff the rest of the year. So my apologies, but yeah, whenever we have it out, I have no guarantee of how long it'll be there at that point. Um, it's one of those things that it's, things are decided of how long they last based on sales and I can't predict that. My crystal ball is always broken when it comes to the sales thing because something I think might not be hot is hot. Something I think's gonna be hot isn't, it's a flop. So I can't predict you guys, I'm not good at it. We just make our best judgments and kind of go from there. Ooh, I drug the brush in the black. So, oh well, it's all good. We just add a little bit of white. That's it, that's all we're doing. This one's done. We grab my red one, do the same thing. I'm just gonna do a little bit of white highlights, not too much. Just so you guys know, these are $7, these peppermints. These two are done. I will, I will poly these, or the dry versions I have of these here in a few minutes. Let me just move these out of my way though. Now on my uh, bigger canes, you're gonna stick with your white highlights around the outside perimeter, like on the top. So you don't wanna put them at the bottom. That's gonna look weird. You're wanting to put them where the light would hit them. Stick with the outside. And then in here in your bow, I literally just come in underneath where I did all the swishes. So like kind of like behind it, underneath it, that sort of thing. And then get a little dab of paint and do a little cue right there. And you know what, maybe a little bit right here. And then keep it like that, as simple as that. That candy cane's finished. How cute is it? Candy canes are one of my favorite things to paint. Maybe because I can I can paint them very quickly. Um, maybe that's why I like them so much because I, I kind of get them done within a day or two usually, unless I'm out of my mind and not quite you know functioning on the fast level I, I used to or I like to be at. But I love doing candy canes. Do uh, Kathy's asking if I paint the backs? Uh, yes, I do, but I wait until I'm fin finished doing it because as you can see, my back isn't clean. So for me, because I always make a mess on my backs, because I make a mess on my table and by sliding these around, they get dirty. I just paint my backs at the end. When they're dry, after I poly them, I then flip them over and paint backs. 
Now, only things I got left to do are these two, just as I just did on the bigger uh, candy canes. Um, I'm coming around that outer edge, just a little bit of white, not much. Simple as that, you're done. Same thing on this one, stick on that outer edge. Let me make sure I'm done with my white. Yep, I'm done. These are kind of awkward to pick up when they're wet. So there you go. There's a look at your finished canes, your small canes. These are uh, $4 each, just FYI, $4 each. Um, our peppermint candies are $7 each and your larger cane is uh, $12. If anybody's looking to order those, you can get those online at yardardose.com. All right, so that's it as far as our what we were painting together tonight. Now, I did tell you guys that we're gonna you're gonna see glittering multiple times. So here is another quick glitter tutorial. These pieces I finished earlier, so they are completely dry. Uh, you know, I, that's one thing you want to make sure is your pieces have to be dry, 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 dry. Because if they're not, and you have pieces of uh, un, undried paint in those car in those etching. Whenever you go to put your poly over top, it's gonna bring that paint right up and it's gonna smear across your top. I only tell you that because I've done it, being impatient and, you know, kind of ruin your pieces really easily. Uh, Kimberly says, why do you do the white switch that way and not across the small one? Why do I do the white switch that way and not across on the small one? Uh, the small candy canes? I do the white swishes the same same way on both of them. I might not be understanding the question, but you kind of stick on the outside perimeter of them. Is that what you were talking about? But you're also going with the length of the cane. You're trying to extend the length of it. Okay. I'm just getting out my, um, my roller. I always keep them in bags because I reuse them. And it keeps your hand clean. So clean hand, pulling up that roller, you're gonna take your handle and hit it on there. And as simple as that, ta-da, your clean glitter roller. So, uh, poly. I have my polyurethane in a squirt bottle because y'all know I use a ton of it. So I'm gonna just squirt a little bit on here and roll it in. Me personally, I always use a roller. This, this one, you can use a foam roller or you can use a regular mat roller. Uh, this one's a regular roller. Uh, honestly, I think I got like a pack of 20 of these on Amazon for, I don't know, like 16 bucks. They're not the greatest quality, but eh, they work. So I'm kind of just, this is how I explain it to people that when they work for me and I'm explaining to them how to do this. You're wanting to glaze a donut. So you go to Shipley's Donuts in the morning, you know how they have those hot glazed donuts, or at least they did years ago. Um, and you get that glaze on there. You want that glaze covering that whole piece. So once you have a good glaze on there, think of your um, glitter as seasoning. Like you're seasoning a steak and you want every bite of that steak to have the same exact flavor. That's what I kind of think about when I'm doing glitter. I'm gonna stand because I'm sweating so bad that this glitter's gonna stick to me once I get it in my lap. Uh, but you're just gonna kind of shake it on there. Think about it, like I said, seasoning a steak for dinner. You're wanting every bite of that steak to taste the same. So glaze the donut and then season the steak. If you think about it like that, it'll be a lot easier. Nice and sparkly. Now, that's the first half of polying. I still have to poly over this. This has to dry, be completely dry. And then I'll come right back over it, which would be tomorrow, um, with the same exact roller and a little bit of more poly. Because you need that glitter to stick in the middle. In order for it to stick, you gotta have a layer underneath it and a layer on top of it. So, it's easy, y'all. I've been telling y'all, y'all will love it, but it's, it's, I think some of y'all thought it would be hard, it's not. It's very easy. So, the roller has a nap, I can't tell. Yes, it is a nap roller. This one was not a foam. Uh, I prefer the nap rollers whenever it comes to glittering. 
Uh, Debbie says, beautiful, Joyce, awesome. Thank you, guys. And yes, I'm using that clear silver mixture. Y'all, anytime you see me glittering anything, I'm always using the clear glitter mixture. Always, 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 always. We, I never, ever, ever use just clear. So if, if anytime y'all see me glittering or my mom, we're all both using the mixture every time. So y'all love the glitter. I know, I know. Have, has anybody attempted to do poly glitter like I just showed y'all? Have y'all tried that? I don't know if anybody has any finished Christmas pieces that they've tried it with. Um, but yeah, it's nice and easy. Those of you who maybe didn't catch, catch this whenever I was doing it, I encourage you to hit replay. I think this video can show you guys that these things are a lot easier than y'all might think that they are. And I, I think they're very achievable for you. So thank you guys so much for joining me tonight. I appreciate y'all sticking with me. Um, we will see you guys. I'll see y'all again Thursday here in the Painters Club. Y'all will see my mom on Wednesday as well here in the Painters Club doing gingerbread uh, boy and girl. So uh, Joyce, you did your, uh, your poly on your Christmas tree. Phaedra said she's getting ready to do it soon. And uh, Debbie, uh, not finished, but glittering. Awesome, y'all, I cannot wait to see y'all's finished products. I'm so excited. So thank y'all for joining me tonight. We will see y'all uh, tomorrow night if you're in the Academy for our Zoom. And then you'll catch my mom Wednesday and you'll catch me on Thursday. So we have a, a week filled with stuff for you guys. I can't wait to see y'all next time. Thank y'all for joining. I'll see you later.